uh, we will use that to also introduce sex as a characteristic. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, suppose we wanted to have sex in this model. So each person, um, oh, I'll upload that, that model. So each person has, has a certain sex. How would I accomplish that? Hmm? Yeah, we could add a parameter um, which would encode, um, uh, would encode their sex. But to avoid this whole um, ambiguity of ones and zeros or true and false um, to encode that parameter, what, what would be a more robust way to do that? To have a, an option list is right. So, so we're going to go and, and provide an, uh, an option list. So do you remember how we added an option list? Where do we do that? Click on the model. Maybe. Click on the model, yeah, okay. So let me make sure this is uh, recorded. Okay, it is, okay, great. Um, new uh, option list. And this option list will be called what? Sex, Sex with a capital X, be, uh, S rather, because it's it's indicating the 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 set of all possible sexes someone could carry on. Okay, so this will be uh, we'll say female and male. Yeah, and we'll do say finish. So now we have sex in here as a characteristic. Now we want to associate each person with a sex. How are we going to do that? For the sake of, of Dominic, I'm going to upload uh, my latest uh, video uh, here. Oh, no, I don't want to stay on this page. Uh, here we go. Um, add more videos. Okay. Uh, okay, adding immigration. Uh, I don't think we added the Krugerian. Krugerian monologue. Okay. Great. Um, okay. So how are we going to add it as a characteristic of each person? What do we need to do to each person? We need to add a parameter. That's right. So now they're going to have not one parameter, not just one, is initially infected, but two. And this parameter will be called what? Sex, lowercase s, and what will its type be of that parameter? So we've added it to person. This is a parameter in person, right? What will its type be? Six. Capital S E X sex. That's right. There we go. The type of this will be sex. So we'll take on one of those two values, female or male. Okay. Okay, are we ready to use this? I'm going to use this to also not only, uh, only illustrate the birth process, I'm going to use it to also illustrate another feature of state cards called guards. Okay? Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, we will now, having done that, I'd like to go um, uh, to go and uh, insert another state chart, okay? Um, and we're going to have a state chart called pregnancy state chart. Okay? And there's gonna be two states in this state chart. Not pregnant and pregnant. Okay. Pregnant. There we go. You notice by convention, I tend to capitalize uh, state names and put put transition names in lower case, partly that so I can distinguish between them uh, visually, and when I do control space, I can tell what's what more easily. Um, but um, but it, um, it's, it's a convention that you can decide on whether you want to make use of it or not. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> in this state chart, we are going to put in a transition
from non-pregnant to pregnant that, that is called conception. And we will put in a transition from pregnant to non-pregnant, which is, is called delivery. Okay. Now, um, for the delivery transition, we will make it a timeout of nine months, and, or you can choose for the animals of your preference um, what an appropriate gravid period would be. Um, and, and I want to highlight actually something about that. Um, let's talk about this. So, ladies and gentlemen, to this point, when we've used a timeout, we have always used a number here, a fixed number. And that's left us with a rather um, awkward choice. We can use a rate transition. What sort of distribution of residence times does someone have? If this were a rate transition, don't do this, but if this were a rate transition, notice the icon is different. You notice that? This rate transition, this decline reflects an exponentially distributed residence time. No matter how long you've been in the state, if it's a fixed value here, and it doesn't have to be, but um, uh, we'll probably look at some that are not later. But um, if it's a fixed value, your, your time in the state is exponentially distributed. It's continuous, and, and each successive day, you have that same chance of leaving as you did yesterday, if, if you're still in the state, if that same chance of leaving each successive day is exponentially distributed. And you might think a timeout, you might be forgiven for thinking that a timeout, you leave after exactly some fixed time. And so you're stuck between an exponential distribution or a precise distribution. And I'm happy to report with any logic that that's not the case. So a timeout is actually more general in the sense that, mark my words, we can draw the value for the timeout. We don't have to treat it as a constant, nine. We can actually draw it from a distribution, if we wish. We could draw it from an empirical distribution of, of um, lengths of pregnancies, for example. Do you remember yesterday, we actually explored, as one of the many things we explored, a custom distribution, do you remember this? We could create a similar custom distribution for length of pregnancy and just draw from it right <coughs> here. And what this will be, what, it, what that means is that every time you come into the state pregnant, it will draw a value from, you know, here it's just nine, but if we put a call to a custom distribution here, it would call that and determine, oh, I'll be leaving after exactly, you know, 278 days or after, 252 days. It would it would actually call us. So when it comes in, it's going to execute what's here in the timeout. Okay, and that allows you to impose a custom distribution with the timeout. You just you can choose whatever expression you want your draw from the appropriate distribution, and it will use that as the value for the timeout. And in other words, use excuse me, yes, use it as the value to set the time you will leave. So that basically says, how long from now will I leave? And it can be a general expression. Don't be fooled into thinking it has to be just a number. I'm putting nine months, but it could be a draw from an empirical you know, uh, distribution of pregnancy, um, uh, of pregnancy durations. Does that make sense? It's a very useful factoid. OK. Um, OK, now this one here. This one is going to be set by a rate, this conception. It's going to be set by a rate which is going to be dictated by a fertility, a fertility rate, okay? Now, if time, if, if time were on our side, I could make the fertility rate depend on the person's age. It's very straightforward to do. It would take about 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Take about, about 10 to 15 minutes to do. Um, and if there's demand, I'd be glad to do that now, bearing in mind that that's what lies between you and lunch. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you want, we could defer that to a later model. 
we can make use of a fixed fertility rate for now, um, but a fertility rate that will be most emphatically reserved for women. Um, so uh, which would you prefer? Would you prefer me to show you a time-varying fertility, or would you prefer to see a fixed fertility rate and enjoy lunch earlier? A tough choice, I see. Um, I guess fixed. What's that? I guess fixed. Fix, you want to do fix? Okay, we'll do fix for now, but we'll come back to this. Okay, we'll see. We'll see how we can implement aging. Tell you what, we will see how we can implement aging automatically, very or very easily in this model, and we'll do that before lunch. But we won't actually have the time varying fertility uh, done before lunch. Okay, what do you think? We okay with this? Okay, excellent. So what we will do is um, go to main and we will put into place a uh, fertility rate here as a parameter. Fertility rate. What sort of parameter will that be? Can anyone riddle? Oh, sorry, I put in a function. That's not what I want. It also begins with F, but that's, that's not, not, not proper. Okay, this is a fertility rate. Um, Okay, fertility rate. Uh, please do not learn model layout principles from, from me with abandon. Um, I, I apply some, I'm fairly careful about state charts, but I, I actually am not that good about laying out things in general. And um, really, I, I deserve to be criticized for, for this layout. <laughs> okay, for the fertility rate, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is a, what sort of quantity here? Can anyone say? What sort of quantity? Right. It's a rate, good, okay. Um, good, this is a rate and it'll be a per year rate, okay. By default, we'll specify it on a per, per year basis. Great, and, and we'll specify a value of it of say, um, you know, one, one birth every um, one every ten years, say. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, now, obviously, empirical data could be put in there for the person. We are going to make this rate depend on, and this will be this will depend on that rate. But I'm going to do something new in just a moment. How do I depend on that rate I just created in Maine? How do I do it? I say what main dot fertility rate and now the new thing watch this i will make a guard oh, i'll make a guard that asks if the person is female and only puts it in if the person is female okay okay now why did it um oh oh that's okay that's that's nice you can actually explicitly ask, okay, make it a given unit, or you can just use it as a per year unit. That's, that's, that's interesting. Okay, the guard here, ladies and gentlemen, will be sex equals what? And this will only happen if the sex is female. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Okay, um, so, so now we have pregnancy, but the final. Do you want the uh, unit of rate to be per day? Sorry, yes, uh, per per year. Thank you, per year. Fertility rate is per year. Yeah, thank you. Because you'll notice fertility rate itself is specified per year, but we could convert it to others. That's that's what that means, right? Okay. So by default, if we just use this, this should be per year. Yeah. Um, I don't think it will automatically convert it if it's per day. It will, it will just allow us to convert it by calling, calling it with different units. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so now we have to perform the birth. Okay, so Kurt, can you help there? Uh, What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you train guys to deliver babies? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now we got to deliver the baby. Um, okay. So where are we going to deliver the baby? Okay. That's that. That is subject to interpret to ambiguity. Where in the model will we deliver? Will the baby be delivered? In what element of the model? Well. Okay, it will affect the population, but it's actually in this delivery transition here. Yeah. Do you see that? Okay, so this is what needs to happen. Do you remember the, the actual process here is basically the same as what we did for immigration? That's the good news. Are you ready to do this? Ready? Watch this. You want to add this baby to the population, a new baby to the population. So what you do is main... Where does the population live? Can you tell me? Does it live in the experiment? Does it live in person? The population lives where? In, in Maine. Maine. Thank you. Okay. Maine dot add under bar population. And then we're going to specify, are they initially infected in their sex? Why is it asking us? When we go to add this baby, why is it asking us for whether they're initially infected in their sex? Can anyone say? Okay, so I'm in this delivery transition, and, and here I did main.add population, and why is it asking us for these things? Why those things in particular? Why not population size, or why not duration of infection? Why these things in particular? Because it needs to provide that new agent. Yes, those are the what of the agent. The, they're right over here. They're the parameters of that new agent. If we don't specify them, I think it just uses the default values for them, which might sometimes be, be okay. But here, okay. For is initially infected, let's rule out vertical transmission. What's is initially infected for the baby? If, if, if there, no vertical transmission occurs, the baby is born with what infection state? Okay, so are they initially infected or not? No. So is initially infected is true or false? False. And the sex of the baby will be just a randomly chosen sex, right? Now we could add a distribution, but I'm not gonna do that with you before lunch, custom distribution. So what I'm gonna do is show you a different way, ready? Sex dot, okay, um, okay, yes. Sex dot values dot, okay, um, okay, uh, we have to do this, um, fine, random, from, yes, random from, uh, and I think you could just do, think you can do this, but um, I'm, I'm not actually, no, it's, it's gonna be unhappy, yes. Right, set, okay, fine. Sex.values, um, like that, sex.values. Okay, the set of all possible values are listed, and then we pick a random from that, okay? A random one from that. Okay, um, so, uh, right. Um, I think there's actually, a, there may be a cleaner way to do it. Let's, let's, let's try to, okay. Add population, okay. So why isn't it? Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, you may be right about that. Um, so, Three. I think it's three to close, but it says I'm providing it with just, it's not applicable for types Boolean, but I'm actually providing, okay, I, I just want to... Is it the other add population? No, because there's only two, one that takes none. Okay, it's not applicable, okay, something, oh, oh, it's the other, oh, I see what you mean. The code. other call. Yeah, it's the other, other place where it's being added. This is the question you're asking. Okay. Okay, sorry. So this one is correct. This one is correct. So we pick a random sex, and um, and uh, and that's achieved by this random from this, 
and we add the baby is not, in, not infected with a randomly chosen sex and add it to the population. Okay, um, I think there's actually a slightly cleaner way to do this, um, but I, um, I, I don't remember uh, for sure off the top of my head, so I'm gonna have to check that. In any case, the, the place that's complaining is actually about if I followed it, it would take me to immigration event because here I'm not specifying the sex of the immigrant, okay? So I will just add the same thing there, um, here. So, and, and this is getting messy. This is getting messy with all the parentheses. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say Boolean is immigrant infected. This is just a nice name for this value um, here and and then I'm going to say Boolean, I'm going to have a nice name, oh, sorry, sex, uh, sex of immigrant um, equals, and I'm going to do this, uh, and then I can just add to the population is immigrant infected and sex of immigrant. And, and that makes it a little bit cleaner. It's clear what, what each of these things is and then I will do that, and now it is uh, hunky-dory. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think Sean is of a vintage that would appreciate that. Okay, um, okay. now this is wrapping around because um, it's, it's, it's a bit long, which Kurt might have predicted. Um, okay, so let me, let me make this a, a wee bit smaller so it doesn't wrap. Um, or, I, yeah, boom, something like that. Okay, so what this is is just, it's, it's creating a variable. It's, it's, it's giving it a nice name. This random true, we're, we're, we're flipping a coin as to whether the immigrant is infected. And we're giving that a nice name. Is immigrant infected? True or false? And then we're creating a nice name for the sex of the immigrant, which is determined this way, we give it a nice name. And then we add to the population this thing that says, okay, is the immigrant infected? And what's the sex of the immigrant? And then we apply the network to knit them into the network. Okay, this is, this is what's going on there in the immigration event. Okay, who needs Krugerian help? I think occasionally it stops doing autocomplete if it's if it if it's so confused about the model that it can't understand what's going on. It will it will do that. Okay. So by the way, this these are the only things which have changed. This is is different. And basically all I did is I took what had been computed here yeah. in, a, in a, because it was getting too messy, I couldn't tell what was what, or it wouldn't be visually obvious, and I put it up here and gave them nice names. So the first is sex an immigrant a parameter that we made? This thing here? Yeah. No, this is just a nice name for this value which we're just using here. It's, it's just, a, it's just a, a, a quick, handy thing, way to name this value so we don't have, and by naming it, it's clear to people what it means. This is the sex of the immigrant, this is the indication if the immigrant is infected, and then we add them with those two things. And, and I preferred that to just having, let me compare this to what was there before. What was there before was, was of a grimmer aspect. And it, 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 it uh, was, was like this, okay? Um, what was there before? This is versus previous. 
I preferred the above to, even though it was a bit more wordy, to this, um, where it was all like like this. Um, I'll, I'll I'll line it up to be to be um, sort of considerate to it or. or to do a fair comparison, but that's what it was before. And to me, it wasn't visually obvious what these things were. Um, so in other words, um, it wasn't visually obvious to someone perhaps what this is or what this means. By giving it a nice name, you can communicate what is this thing to yourself or to others who look at this. They won't be as scared as this. This is a little bit opaque to people. Like what, what's being done here? What's the essence of this? What's, what's the meaning of this random true of that? And up here it tells you, well, it's, at least it gives you a good hint with the name. This is to determine if the immigrant is infected. This one, it's not clear what the intention is. What's the, what's the, the, the meaning behind that? What's the goal of that? And the, the answer is it's to determine the sex of the immigrant. So. By giving it nice names, we can spare ourselves. Uh, we could spare ourselves confusion. Does that make sense? Okay. Do people want that up there a bit longer? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I would note, like this thing came from within this. So I just copied it. This thing came from within that, although I had just pasted it in earlier, and um, so I didn't weave it out of whole cloth. Okay. So in general, naming things is important. Having a good set of naming conventions which communicate. And sometimes you can clean up code and make it more transparent by using right names, by introducing names. And this is the way we introduce names. We declare a, a variable. And we give this, rather than just having this expression sitting there in a most unseemly fashion, we give it a nice name, the result of it. And by naming it, we make its intention clearer, the meaning of it clearer. And then we use those names um, in a way that's often easier. So here we're adding a population member. Um, and we have to specify, are they infected in the sex of the immigrant? And you know, it would be nice if I said, uh, now add uh, the immigrant with the above characteristics. Now add to the population, uh, population, the immigrant with the above characteristics. Okay, that's what's going, and now now knit them into the network. That's what the slash slash, this is called a comment, and I can put anything I want after that. Okay, so, you know, I, I'll just decorate this more. So, determine um, the sex of the immigrant with uh, um, a coin flip. So it's just with equal probability. Um, with it, with um, um, as being either male or female, female with equal probability, and and writing these comments is a is a best practice. Um, if if you can write them, naming helps, but writing uh, comments is really good. Okay, determine um, determine if the, you don't have to write this, but I like to, if the immigrant is infected. These comments, they don't do anything to the code, it's just, they don't change the code, they just make it easier to communicate. So having done that, I could actually go and paste this in there. And you'll notice the comments are in after that. So you don't have to write these things, it's just I was trying to use the time to kind of describe what's being done. Sometimes spacing helps also to avoid overwhelming someone. So this kind of walks you through logically what's happening. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So this is shorter, but more obscure, I think. The above is more verbose, but, but it 
it's more transparent in the sense of being able to tell what's going on, the intention. Are we okay with that? Okay, can we can we compile the model? Does anyone want that up there a little bit longer? Just put it up when we work for lunch. Okay, great. I'll do that. Can we run run this model? Yeah, I'll keep it up uh, for lunch. Great. Um, do you want to run the model? Here we go. And now we have immigrants coming in. We have babies being born, um, and uh, and we have. Um, um, and we have uh, people dying. Let me ask a question this. Um, if we wanted to test, is this model's, are babies being born in this model? How would we do that? Let me give you two ways to do it, okay? First way, is a baby being born in the model? We could go, and when a, the mother delivers here, watch this. I've not, treat, I've not taught you this, but this is a key thing about knowing about any logic. You can write trace ln here. And this is actually going to print something out. A baby was born to mother. Well, a baby was born. We'll just leave it like that here. We could print out the identity of the baby if we wanted to, to what mother it was born. We could do all of that, but we could do trace ln a baby was born. Okay? Um, notice the double quotation marks around each side. And, and this will be printed out on what's called the console. Can we, sh can we show this now? This is for this transition here. A baby was born. Okay? Okay, Kurt, you might want to help, help people. Okay? Okay, so, so this is just in this delivery transition. What was there? Before was just this, and I just added this trace ln. This is an L, not a 1. Okay? Do, do, you want, do people want that up there a bit longer? Or are you okay? Okay. Um, maybe people are faint from hunger. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's run this. And now, if we go to the console, view console, there's no babies being born. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, no babies are being born. Okay, another way we could test it would be if we were to turn off immigration. So if we were to create a, a um, this is great. Oh man, you're gonna get to see me debug this model. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> don't worry, it'll converge quick. Okay, um, another thing we could do would be to create a new experiment called no immigration. So I'll do copy, and then I'll do paste here. Hey, come on, get back here. Paste, boom. Okay, um, let's get down here. And I'll say no immigration. Pop size 250, no immigration. And we could see our people being added in. Okay, immigration rate, we'll set it to zero per year. There we go, no immigration. So, so here we go, and, and we'll do this, and indeed, no one seems to be being added to the model. So why aren't babies being added? The first key to figuring out why a model's broken is to have some hypotheses, to come up with some hypotheses. So I have two hypotheses. Maybe everyone's male in this model. Maybe we don't have any females, in which case nobody's getting to this point. Or maybe there's something wrong with this hazard rate is another possibility. So let's go see if everyone's male. How could I check if everyone's male? Well, one easy way to, to raise confidence is to go in here and browse down to level of a person. Well, look at that. Their sex is unspecified, 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 unspecified. They certainly are not female. Okay, we must have done something wrong. Our model must have something wrong. So my hypothesis required some refinement. It wasn't that they were all males, they were all unspecified. So let's go to the population. Where do we specify sex of people? In the what? 
Sex is a is a parameter of person. So where is it specified? From whence whence does it come? What specifies parameters for the population for each person? The the population, indeed. And look, if we go look at the population, sex is unspecified. Do you see that? So we'll flip a coin as to sex. Hmm? So we could do this either way. Let's maybe we'll do it in the interest of time the way that we just saw. Random random from okay and what we will do is we will say random from sex dot values okay boom do we need a semicolon there no we're just determining a value the value for sex so, okay so what did i do i went to population and I said, pick randomly from among these sexes. Now, I could have done this with a custom distribution. I could have done it by flipping a coin with random true and having question mark male, otherwise female. But I did it with this random from. That's for the population. Okay? So I'll put it down here at the bottom so we don't. But this is what I did. I just put that for the sex. We had forgotten to put that for sex. Are we okay? Ladies and gentlemen, are you okay? Are you ready to run this or would you like me to leave this up a little bit longer? Uh, Kurt is ready for assistance. He's also ready to meet for projects over lunch. Okay, okay now let's go down to the level of a person and we should see here's a female, here's a male, here's a female, male, okay. Let's go look at the console. Still nothing. Still nothing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so what's going on here? Uh, okay. So that guard should be sex equals female. We have fertility rate per year. Um, okay. One hypothesis is nine months haven't passed yet. This is based on nine months transition. Maybe nine months have not yet gone past. And maybe that's why they're the not time having. Is days. The time is days. So let's, let's run this. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is a lot of days. Um, okay. Let's go. Oh, babies were being born. Okay. Great. So I ran it as fast as possible. And now babies were being born. Okay. So it, evidently that last time I just didn't run it far enough. But notice I had a hypothesis. Oh, maybe, I thought first, maybe there's something still wrong with that transition. Then I thought maybe it's, we haven't run it long enough. So watch this. Now babies are, are eligible for birthing. Um, so we should start to see, okay, baby was born. See that? Baby was born, baby was born. Okay, so now babies are being born in this, in this network. But notice what's not happening. What did we forget? We forgot to add them to the network, right? They're being born, but in a disconnected sort. So now we should at least have done apply network here. But really, we probably should have, well, we probably should have a function that does that, but I'm not gonna trouble you with that before lunch. Okay, so I just went in here and made it so they're also applied, you apply the network, okay? Now, by the way, I, I could have printed out who was the baby, what was the identity of the baby um, here, who was the baby that was born, what were their characteristics, who was the mom. I could have done all of that here, but I chose not to for the sake of time because it, it approaches 12.30 and the stomachs are probably rumbling, okay? so. So now, if we, if we run this, now we should start to see pretty soon babies being, being born here into this model, okay? Um, here's, here's babies um, coming in, okay. But why aren't they being knitted in? 
supply network. I would have expected them to. Okay, so would have thought that with the supply network they they should come in and let's okay now they're, they're not being knitted in it's, it's for sure okay yeah they, they should be okay um we'll have to figure that out after, over lunch um so uh, this this apply network should knit that person in but um but something's, something's off right now. So I'll have to figure that out. Um, okay, so uh, I think time for lunch. Uh, should we give an hour, Sean? Yeah. Do you, is that enough? Do you, do you, do you need a little less than that? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Kurt, any ideas why? No. No, no. Network size in the distance. Maybe they sort of just get put too know, far I away because people yeah. move to yeah. death. Having stop having people die. Yeah, yeah. Disable death as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So Kurt is available uh, for meeting on projects over lunch. So if you'd like to, to meet with him, um, I will also go up to Subway and grab a sandwich and, and could have a little bit of discussion over lunch if people need to to have that. Otherwise, we'll meet back here at one thirty. Okay. And we'll uh, continue on this afternoon. We'll do some discrete event modeling. And in that this model, in. I'll post this model. No, you post the model, but I also just wanted to string up again. Oh yes, this this thing here. Yeah. Yeah. I still have an error in front of time. Okay. Do you want me to? I can take a look at that right now. No, I'm, I'm going to try and figure it out. Okay. I just need to see if that's got that right. You got it. Will this door be locked? I'll stay here. Oh, I yeah, because I brought my lunch with me today. Oh. Great. Okay. Thanks very much.